Hi, welcome back to TubaPeopleTV.com, where we talk about Arnold Jacobs all of the time. I have here as my guest a dear old friend, Michael Stodd, who's visiting Eugene, Oregon, from Berlin. Welcome, Mike. Thanks, Mike. It's nice good to, to see be you. here. Good to see you. <laughs> Can you uh, greet us? Give us a typical German greeting. Uh, well, Germans give the handshake. Yeah. Yeah. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Yeah. Would I say bitte? No. Okay. You would say Guten Tag. Uh huh. You would okay. say uh, you would say your last name normally. Stodd. Gross. Oh, sehr gut. <laughs> Mike and I uh, go go uh, way back. Uh, late seventies. We were both in the Portland Youth Philharmonic in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Mike's a trumpet player. Plays principal trumpet in the Berliner Komische Oper uh, in uh, in Germany and um, back in PYP, part of the trumpet section. And um, just thinking back, uh, Mike, you ended up doing your your master's degree at Northwestern, where you were a student of Vincent Chickowitz. And, but you also ended up uh, studying with, uh, with Mr. Jacobs while you were in Chicago. How did you end up um, getting to Mr. Jacobs' studio door? What, did you, what brought you there? Uh, well, when you go to Chicago, you're not just going to a specific teacher like Chickowitz. Of course, Chickowitz was, for trumpet players, the big name to study with, but it's also a school of brass playing, and that includes Adolf Herseth and Arnold Jacobs on a tuba, Dale Clevenger, uh, etc. All the brass section, they were all famous players. So um, once I got into Northwestern and I had lessons regularly with Chickowitz, then I was also interested in studying with Herseth um, and, uh, and Arnold Jacobs. Everybody, uh, not just tuba players, but trombones, trumpets, even woodwind players, mm. wanted to study with Jacobs. Uh, and even outside of Chicago, players would come in from Philadelphia Orchestra and L.A. Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. And he was, in, uh, in the sense of uh, breathing technique, world famous and, and could benefit just about any wind player who visited him. So, um, of course, hearing him in the orchestra, too, is a marvelous tubist right. and, and a wonderful musician, uh, was also a fascinating experience. So, uh, that's, that's how um, I became interested. A lot of the classmates I had uh, also studied with Jacobs. They were able to get a lesson now and then and uh, spoke highly of them. So um, after being there uh, yeah, a short time, um, I inquired and, and he kept putting me off time and again. <laughs> that was his way. That was his test, yeah. his filter. I'd call him Monday. He said, call me again Thursday, see if I can see you on Saturday. I'd call him on Thursday, and he said, well, you know, I'm kind of busy. Call me Friday night. He says, okay, you can have 10 o'clock, but call me Friday night just in case. And I think I called a couple times on Friday night, and he said, no, it just won't work today. Call me again next week. <laughs> but once we started, and I think that was my second year in Chicago, uh, I'd finished Northwestern, the graduate program, but became a member of the Civic Orchestra, and because I had the stipend, then I was able to study with Bud and any brass player in the orchestra who would have me. And mm -hmm. so, I, so I, I knocked on Jacob's door again and he finally got me into his studio. And what, uh, what, what, what do you recall that you came away from, from studying with him? What was maybe the top one, two, or three things that you, that you learned from him? Well, um, I learned an amazing amount from him. Uh, and I studied with a lot of prominent teachers up to that point. I mean, Chickowitz being the most recent, and, and of course Bud. But I'd, I'd studied uh, in Portland with uh, Jim O'Banion and Fred Sauter, and uh, went to Aspen and studied with Louis Ranger and Chris Gecker, and um, saw Tony Plog when he gave a master class, and had a lot of really great experiences with teachers. And they all had their own ideas, mm -hmm. and they, were all, they all helped me yeah. in different ways. Um, but the lessons with Jacobs, they put all that information together hmm. and helped me reconcile it into a, into a very simplified method, which, um, which um, put me up to the next level, I can say. I mean, I, I was already a good player when I came to him, but uh, he got me that much further. And um, um, it was, it, it, the, the funny thing, it was so simple, his mm -hmm. approach. Uh, that um, 
that uh, was per, that was I would say the number one thing I got from him. Simplicity. Simplicity and and the ability to um, sort of transcend the music on the page and develop your thoughts. What do you want it to sound like? Get your imagination working, and then of course you had the skills, the technical skills to produce it mm -hmm. with the breath. And of course, everything I'd learned about, you know, fingering, tonguing, and so forth, um, that was involved up to that point. That's great. You obviously, when you were in Northwestern, you studied with uh, Mr. Chickowitz. That was your your weekly uh, weekly assignment. Is and Jake, Jacob's lessons were uh, in addition to those. Were there any uh, uh, was there any overlap in what you received, the information or the approach uh, that you received from from uh, Mr. Chickowitz and, and and Mr. Jacobs? Absolutely, absolutely. The application of the breath in a relaxed manner um, and, and therefore eliminating unnecessary tension uh, was a product of both uh, methodologies. And also I think the concept of sound uh, had to be very similar because they played in the same brass section mm -hmm. for so many years and their aesthetic was was uh, as far as a good produced, as a well produced sound, um, I believe there's, yeah, almost, almost the same concept there. Uh, Chickowitz would emphasize uh, technical aspects, but always in the, in, the, uh, in the realm, in the framework of uh, good musical taste. Mm -hmm. And even if it differed from his own feeling for peace, he, want, he made sure that the student didn't stray too far from what would be considered in a general sense um, uh, good playing and a good, good in, in, with a good sound. And, and um, Jacob's approach in this sense was similar. Uh, he, he wanted the student to sound as good as possible and um, use the sound to express the musical ideas mm -hmm. which the musician wanted to express. So in that sense, um, music making uh, involved the, the, uh, a similar concept of, of sound. That sounds, that's excellent. Mike, how long have you been in the, uh, in the opera in Berlin? I'm in my 21st season now. 21st season, that's, that's quite a long time. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, when I had a chance to visit you some years ago, it was such a lovely uh, place to perform and the city was Fresh in the, the rebuilding, the eastern part was fresh in rebuilding, and the wall hadn't been down for very much, well, I guess about 10 years or so. Nice. But, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the pedagogy in Germany, Mike and I were talking before we started taping, and uh, uh, the, the pedagogy of Jacobs, Arnold Jacobs, isn't so prevalent, but Chickowitz, the pedagogy, pedagogy of Vince Chickowitz is. Of course, there, there's a relationship there because... For some period of time, Vince Chickowitz studied with Jake, so there's some overlap there. Can you describe what uh, what things are like from a, a Chickowitz pedagogical standpoint in Berlin, well, or in Germany in general? Yeah. Well, yeah, because Chickowitz visited Germany uh, a number of times and held seminars, week-long seminars, uh, there are a lot of trumpet students mostly, but also professionals who were able to um, experience him and, and, and his lessons, and that's become more uh, widespread. Um, I'm thinking of a, a, a professor in Switzerland um, uh, who, um, he doesn't play anymore, but he does, no, does nothing but gives lessons, and his students do quite well. Um, and so, so um, Chickwitz is well known, and, and his school is well known. In fact, um, Matthias Kamps, who's in our trumpet section, had a few lessons with Chickowitz, hmm. and so it's it's not an uncommon thing to find someone who was able to study with him. As far as uh, how that manifests itself in the way players play, uh, you hear, yeah, uh, an improved sense of efficiency. I can say that since when I came over initially, and uh, yeah, the the quality and the standards are are increasing, going up, and um, I think yeah, he was he was part of that. Do you, with your section mate, do you find yourself um, uh, talking this kind you know Chickowitz shop for lack of a better term <laughs> ever? Or yeah, is it sometimes. sometimes. As far as as far as 
trading secrets and stuff, uh, we should actually do more of that, but we generally keep it keep our cards close to our chest for some silly reason. <laughs> So, a lesson for the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think we should uh, be more, more more open about it. And um, uh, the the other German trumpet players, I'm the only American in the section, and I think one, only uh, one of two Americans in the in the whole orchestra. Um, they all came from different backgrounds. Uh, there's one West uh, studied in West Germany, and the other three in in East Germany. And the teachers there have vastly different approaches. Um, so it's it, I mean, you wonder how these guys got so good sometimes knowing the the instruction that they received when they were upcoming. Uh, so um, well, it, I, re I remember Jake Jake would often say with regard to that. Yeah. Um, you know you, you don't especially referring to like the tight gut method. You know with all the, the extra pressure, you, players don't play well because of that. Play they he would often say they play well in spite of that. Yeah. So right. just the, right. I can think of one uh, fellow who, um, uh, well, two fellows, they studied with the same teacher in Berlin, and all trumpet players who wanted to go through Berlin, they had to study with this one teacher. That was before the wall came down in East Germany. And he would have them do technical exercise, one after the other, and wouldn't give them any rest, and just waited to see over their breaking point. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the and the strong ones came through, um, and the weak ones didn't. So um, it, it was kind of like the East German concept of, of of with athletes. I've heard they take a they take a, a handful of eggs, throw them against the wall, and keep the ones that don't break. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah, so I'm I'm with the ones that didn't break, I guess. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> when you were you uh, did you go to the Chickowitz and Chris Foley uh, master classes when they were in Portland in the I did, late seventies, yeah. early eighties. Early eighties, right? Yeah. yeah. It, w did that? Um, obviously, you you had auditioned uh, in in New York uh, as well as uh, at, at uh, Northwestern, but was were, was that um, encounter with Chickowitz at all in your mind when you decided to go? Absolutely. Because I'd met him, I'd played for him mm -hmm. in one of the master classes, and he gave me a couple of tips, and suddenly I was playing better. And uh, of course, I, I, he had a reputation which was very well known. And I mean, I, I figured I'd never get in there because this guy is so famous, mm -hmm. and who I this little, this little kid from Portland. Uh, so um, I was a little bit intimidated, I, I, I should say, but. Um, uh, yeah, I played for him, and he and and he said uh, he'd try to find a place for me, and that and it turned out that he he managed to do that. So I was very lucky, I think. <laughs> well, Mike, I really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your day to stop by and to visit with us and to uh, talk about Mr. Jacobs and Mr. Chickowitz. Um, Puddles, as he always does, he always makes sure that I have a proper thank you gift for every guest, <laughs> and so I'm I'm very happy to present oh, thanks, you Puddles. with the. Uh, this uh, genuine uh, can. It's a genuine. It's a genuine can, and it's filled with genuine University of Oregon duck okay. nuts. Good. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not, I'm nuts about the duck. So. Okay. Good. This this is very nice. All right. Thanks. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you, Michael. Now back to you.